Three shots so far for Rutgers, one on goal. Going inside, Morales shoots and scores! Eric Morales punches it in for the first goal of the night, his third goal of the season. And just like that, over 15 minutes in, Rutgers, Newark, one nothing. These teams are rivals. St. Rose trying to get their first ever win against Adelphi. It's made this game look pretty close. Oh, Duchnowski forcing a turnover. He takes it back. Delphi may have some numbers here. He's going to take a rip, and he scores! Duchnowski unloads his second goal of the game. Adelphi up 7-2. Here he goes inside against Rutherford's defenses, but Rutherford's defense is just too strong. And the ball, who will go off of? Off of Rutherford, it stays with Kane. Here's the first pitch to Kellerman. That one's going to be hit out to right field, and that's going to stay fair. It's a base hit for Kellerman. Brings in a run. And an RBI single by Logan Kellerman. And he once again gets on base and increases Bucknell's lead. Now they lead 5-1. to one. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, it's the core final round, the ECAC men's basketball tournament between the top seed Alvernia Golden Wolves and the ninth seed William Patterson Pioneers. The opening round of this tournament was held Wednesday on campus sites. AC Gwyneth Mercy hosting ninth seed William Patterson, but the Pioneers shocking them 80 to 76 in that matchup. By the timeout, William Patterson on a failed shot. Rebound going the other way is Malik Green. Get the toss over to McKeel Allen trying to break it inside. Faced with multiple pioneers, he has to break it out. Good read here, Jacobs. Out. No, that is Robert Mullen. No good. But another shot and the foul. And this one, Steve Pierce. And he'll head to the free throw line to complete the three point play. Those are some rebounds that have been starting to pile up here for Alvernia, and that's their fifth one offensively in this contest. Rebound battle has been close. Now, Pierce, he converts the three point play. Alvernia increases their lead to five now with 8.37 left to go. And there's substitution upcoming shortly for William Patterson. Yvonne Flory gets past McKeel Allen in another layup. Von Flory tearing it up here in the first half. He is now up to 14 points. Really just an impossible man to stop. He's really gained that ground ever since he became eligible to play for William Patterson to begin this season. Meanwhile, the three by Stout, no good. The rebound for the Pioneers. And here's Ballantin. What more is Montfleur going to do if he gets his chance inside? Meanwhile, we have a foul called against Steve Pierce. We're back here live at the Johnson Stadium at Doubleday Field. Day two of the 2022 Patriot League Baseball Championship live on ESPN Plus, the home home site for Patriot League Baseball. This is Zach Wilson here, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for choosing us here on this sunny Wednesday afternoon. Army took game one yesterday from Bucknell. Eight to seven in a walk-off in the bottom of the ninth from Cam Cerullo's flyout. And right now, Bucknell looks like they're in prime position to respond with a win of their own. As we now head to the bottom of the sixth, the Bison leading the Black Knights six to one. Here's the first pitch to Friedrich, and that's outside ball one. Bucknell started this game with three runs in the top of the first inning, spelling an early exit for Brian Dawson. Since then, three relief pitchers, Robbie Bucher, Matt Rodenbaum, and Trevor Finan. That one hits right down the middle for a called strike, one and one. Ross Friedrich over two today, grounded out the third his last time out. Did allow Manassas to advance the second afterwards. However, Army hasn't gotten a run since the bottom of the first. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one's going to be hit opposite to left field in foul territory. Plenty of space. And Canizaro just can't beat it out. So it'll be a 1-2. Canizaro had a lot of space to try and make that catch. There was one instance early in this game where he was able to get catch and foul territory when he retired Carter Macias the count now one and two for Friedrich looking for his first hit of the game trying to jump start a comeback attempt for Army here's the one two and it hits up high to even it up at two Friedrich entering today's game 
batting 338 on the year, 46 RBIs. Here's a 2-2. This one's going to be hit opposite again left field. Much more space for Canizaro this time. Can he make it? Nope. Not again. Again, another attempt for Canizaro, but he just couldn't get it there. Even with a lot of space near the Army bullpen, just hasn't been able to make a catch right there. It looks like Double Day Bill is one of those baseball fields in the United States that has a lot of space. Foul territories are usually occupied by the bullpens for both sides. Even the MLB has that on occasion, including the Oakland Athletics and the Tampa Bay Rays. 